Hello everyone and welcome back to Great White North Corvette. Today we're here at Toronto Motorsports Park or Canadian Tire Motorsports Park for the Ron Fellows Driving School. Gonna get to drive some Z06s probably around the track. Over here is the go-kart track. There's some people out there right now. We're just waiting for four o'clock and then we all head up to the tower for the driver's meeting. Got the butterflies a bit, but it's gonna be a good time. I got the Ron Fellows signature on the car. Hopefully that'll bring good luck. Um, my name is Ron Fellows. I'm part of the ownership here, along with my wife Linda, Linda, and uh, Carlo Fidani. Uh, in the, and then along the way, the long-standing partnership I've had with General Motors on both sides of the border, we've created this uh, evening program. The good news is, as track owners, uh, from the time the snow melts to the time the snow flies, this track here is completely booked. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, this track is a bucket list track for drivers around the globe. They don't make them like this anymore. Long, fast corners, elevation, absolutely demands respect, which is why we have this team here. Uh, and so these, these guys are all racers and, and uh, uh, left to right, uh, Robin, Rolf, Martin, uh, Matt, sorry, <laughs> and uh, that's uh, Sam Fellows, a junior. Yeah, um, yeah we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get going here. Uh, Sam will do the safety briefing and uh, we will see you through the evening. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sam, I just have a quick question. Yes. Your dad posted the video of the track time here. Yeah. But what's your track? He wouldn't let you post your track he, time? He went faster in the Corvette than I go in my Canadian NASCAR. So that's how fast the Corvette is, the street car. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think pole was in our live race last year was a minute 22.4 or 5. And he did a minute 22.1 in his street car. So it's pretty fast. Yeah. For a 65 year old. <laughs> <laughs> that was the good news. Is that an manual? No. no. That didn't drive. Uh, that didn't drive. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, I was, uh, the reason I did it was, did it that way was because uh, I was concerned about ensuring that the, the shifts were absolutely spot on up the back straight to maximize straight line speed. And the computer knows it better than I do. So I left it to drive. And it was only a couple of down shifts between turn 10 and turn five anyway. So yeah. that was the reason to do it. And I had to, just based on the tire um, and, the, and the cool temperature, we were using tire warmers and you had to get it on the first lap. So we took a couple, couple of tries to get there, but we got there. <laughs> the best part was it was a GT2 RS that had set the record of a 2236 a few years ago. And it was one of their young factory, factory drivers. drivers. <laughs> yes. We had to wait. It happened on May 23rd. Then GM didn't post it until what, July the 3rd? Yeah, that, that race weekend. It was like, yeah, man, 65 year old guy in a Corvette beating <laughs> 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 um, I like to tell people this is the most boring part of the night, and I apologize for that. But once we're done here, there's a lot of fun out there, a lot of driving going on tonight. So I'm going to take you through everything kind of you need to know before we go out there. Um, so all those cars, super capable. Um, we try to put you in groups that are kind of equal to our comfortability and our skill level. Um, if we need to adjust that, it's not a big deal. That's what I'm, I'm there for on pit lane. So I'll do my best to do that. But keep that in mind when we're out there. It's a bit of a group. Um, exercise. Do. Quick photo of the track. So we're actually right here on the outside of uh, turn 10 uh, and you can see there's only 10 corners. So uh, through turn one, turn two, three, four we can see. Um, there's really no tight corners except for this one right here. Okay. Uh, so all these corners super long and fast. Turn two, turn three, turn four, they're all blind corners. So two and four especially are downhill blind corners. So you have to turn, you have to brake before you even see the corner. And that's what makes this track so tough. That's what brings drivers back year after year. And we just had the IMSA race and I can't, 
I can't count on all my fingers how many people I heard drivers saying, oh, this is my favorite track. Oh, this is, we love to come here, blah, blah, blah. It's just a driver's track. You go fast all the time. That's what you like to do as a driver. Uh, radios, so we're gonna have our radios tied into the passenger seat of every car. It's a two-way Motorola radio. Um, it's in the passenger seat through the Corvette, through the Camaro. You're gonna be able to hear us through the stereo of the car. So it's actually hooked into an auxiliary port in the car. Okay, so you're gonna hear us through the stereo system. You can turn us up uh, or, down, or hopefully not down, but you can turn us up on the actual stereo system itself. The Cadillacs are too fancy. They don't have the auxiliary port anymore. So it's literally just the radio. You're gonna hear us directly out of this in the passenger seat, okay? Seating and hands, we're jumping into a bunch of different cars. You're gonna to get to drive all the models, like I said. First thing that I want you to do when I, when I tell you, for example, uh, John or whatever, you can jump in that orange Corvette. Uh, jump in the car, turn it on, because then you'll be able to hear us through the auxiliary system. Um, get your, get your uh, feet set on the brakes first. So first thing I do is I push my foot all the way on the brake, like to the firewall, as far as I can. If my foot is locked, if my knee is locked out, then I gotta bring my seat a little bit forward so that I have a bend in my knee. If I want that full brake pressure, I wanna be able to access it. Knee. So we watch a lot of movies, we see Tom Cruise driving like this a lot. Sometimes you're in tight like this. Neither of those are very good. This is the Goldilocks zone here. So nice bend in the elbow, bend in the knee. You're comfortable, you're good. Uh, mirrors. So here we are, we just got down to pit lane. Got all fitted for our helmets and Hans devices. We'll do a short little meeting here. And there they have some of the Camaros, Corvettes and other stuff. We're gonna drive the CTS V, uh, Blackwing or whatever. We got a nice little canopy here to sit under while we wait. And then we're gonna be heading out on the track in just a few minutes. Uh, if, well, if you hear your name, I'll just call all the names. And if you hear your name, you can start to get your gear on. Um, and if you don't, then you're just in the group, in group B, so you have an extra 10 minutes to wait. So no offense, nothing personal. So you're in the first group, getting ready to go. Yeah. So where do you say you're driving? Uh, Camaro? Camaro. So you're taking out the old Camaro first. ZL1. Is your Corvette a color? Is that an aftermarket thing? No. What color is it? It's a uh, silver yellow metallic. Yeah, I added a little extra red to it. The red you added. I knew something about it. Andrew? cars that are part of Ron Fellows driving school. We have a couple regular C8s here. And then one, two, three, four Z06s. Some SS and one ZL1 Camaros. And then a couple Cadillacs as well. So there's, I think it's, he said 18 cars or somewhere around there. Quite a few cars here for everyone to drive. And you get to try and drive all three. The Camaros, Corvettes, and the Cadillacs. You go in the car alone, and then you have a walkie-talkie with you or the walkie-talkies hooked up to the stereo and that's how they instruct you. They talk to you through the radio. So you don't have an instructor actually in the car with you. You guys go out together in like groups and then the instructor leads the group and you follow the instructor. And if the people do well, then he'll pick up his speed slowly until you guys are doing some pretty fast laps. There's the first group going out right there. Z06 Corvette. What top speed did you hit? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't watching the speed gauge. <laughs> well, that's probably good. That means you were doing good. 
The Camaros seem to be going pretty good though. Yeah, the Camaros were flying. <laughs> they were flying, yeah. There must have been some guys who have been out here before or something. So you go out for about 10 or 15 minutes, do about three or four laps. So right now we're just resting under. Having some peanuts. There you go. No, it's not fast enough. No, it's the, pro the, the beginning of the group, right? Yeah, yeah, for, sure. yeah for sure. Learning the track. And... <laughs> no, that's a good time. Part of it. The Camaro's fast. Though. Yeah, the Camaros were flying. We saw. <laughs> so there he is, great white North Corvette. He's about to take out the Z01 Camaro this time. He took out the Z06 last time. We're gonna rock and roll. You took the Z06 out, now you're taking an SS Camaro out. Have you ever driven a Camaro? Well, not since the 80s. <laughs> Fair. This one's got the automatic rev matching and stuff? Yeah. to getting off the Hans device. Yeah. You, oh, you're asking me. I thought you knew the trick. No. <laughs> no, I you're like, I how did. do I get this? So how was uh, how was the Camaro SS? Camaro was a blast. Does it didn't really compare to the Z06, though. So. No? Does it feel, how does it feel compared to your normal Corvette, though? It feels like a rougher ride than the yeah. C8. What about fast-wise? Like, pretty similar? No, I'd say the C8's faster. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it is just SS. Maybe the ZL1 might have felt yeah. a little bit perkier, which is this one right here. Now, if you guys want to drive some ZL1, some Z06s, and some Black Wings, this is definitely the place to come. This is a good time. admit the Camaros sound nicer than the Corvettes or at least they're louder okay I take back what I said the Z06s sound better Camaro time I personally love them they're a little bit beast like a little bit prehistoric but lots of fun and lots of horsepower so it makes it kind of interesting looking as far up the road as you can. Imagine a baseball batter, you know, major leagues, he's up to the plate and he's trying to see the ball come from the pitcher. Well, if he only looks up at the last moment, he's never gonna hit it. But if he can see that ball leave the hand of the pitcher, he can slow it right down. Some batters say they can see the seams of the ball and how it's rotating. Well, that's what we're trying to do in racing. We're trying to see as far up the road as possible trying to see as far up the road as possible at all times it slows everything down makes it easier to manage We ended up getting some pretty fast laps on the track after learning the lines and getting some tips from the instructors. After the driving is done, everyone goes back to the main building for drinks and a really nice dinner. If any of you want to get the Ron Fellows experience and drive these cars on one of the best racetracks in North America, we cannot recommend it enough. It can't be understated how amazing this track is with the elevation changes and fast corners. Thanks a lot to Ron Fellows, Linda Fellows, and the whole crew at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more videos. See you next time on the Great White North Corvette.